Sutra of Choice, Law of Opportunity It's better to try and regret than not try and regret. In today's world, those who are quick to act and seize new opportunities and seemingly crazy ideas are the ones who succeed. If we were to depict a person's fate with geometric lines, it would rarely be a perfect straight line. Instead, it would resemble a network of branching paths. It's often difficult to determine which of these paths will prove to be useful, interesting, or significant. That's why it's important to see potential for growth in every unexpected event, to embrace new opportunities, and not be afraid to take risks. It is not fate that elevates us above the crowd. It merely gives us a chance. And a strong man does not idly wait. For a miracle to lift him high. He must help fate. A chance arises. And it is time for me to act. The Roman poet Publius Ovidius Naso wrote, Chance is always powerful. Let your hook always be cast, in the pool where you least expect it, there will be a fish. Dale Carnegie, the American psychologist and writer, said, The one who is willing to take risks is the one who sails far. Safe boats don't stray far from the shore. Winston Churchill put it this way, Throughout one's life, everyone stumbles upon their great chance. Unfortunately, most of us simply get up, brush ourselves off, and carry on as if nothing happened. It's not always possible to know whether the opportunity before us is a lucky break or not. But if we don't embrace it, we may never find out. It's important to keep moving and take action even in uncertain situations. Everyone has had a moment in life when they stood before a choice whether to test their luck or to pass by, convincing themselves that the chance of success was negligible and that it wasn't worth the effort. Why do we often choose inaction, and then comfort ourselves with thoughts like I wouldn't have been able to do it anyway or I would have been rejected for sure? Usually, it's because it's easier to go with the flow, without putting in extra effort. But in doing so, we program ourselves for failure from the start. Our actions truly become meaningless because we've already decided that we'll lose. Even if we do decide to try, we'll end up getting what we expected. That's why it's crucial to understand that even if the chance of success is very small, our thoughts and emotions can significantly increase the likelihood of success. The strong in spirit find opportunities where others give up. In quantum physics, all sorts of particle transformations are possible as long as they are not forbidden by conservation laws. These transformations follow probabilistic laws. According to modern views, it is fundamentally impossible to predict the exact moment of transformation or its specific outcome. One can only talk about the probabilities of different processes. To predict the likelihood of a process, one must consider all possible outcomes, even if their probability is extremely low in other words, even if they seem unlikely to happen. Due to the sheer number of possibilities, even those events with a minuscule chance of occurring can have a significant impact on the final result. One missed day gone forever. You cannot retrieve what's lost. Catch the chance as it flies, in action. Seize the opportunity by the forelock. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Therefore, it is necessary to evaluate not the probability of success of a particular action, but first and foremost to determine what that success could bring us. If there is a chance that as a result, our life will improve significantly, isn't the effort and time worth the attempt? In contrast, if we decide not to try, the chances of success are always zero. If we succeed, then our time wasn't wasted. If we fail, which isn't surprising given the slim chance of victory, we'll learn our lessons and move forward. Even though we didn't win, we tried and gained new experience. If we don't try and pass by the chance to change our life, 
we'll never know what we're capable of, and for the rest of our life, we may regret not trying. To risk is to leap off a cliff and spread your wings on the way down. Ray Bradbury Every opportunity we're given is a way to realize what is inherently within us and what is destined for us from above since our appearance in this world is not by chance. For example, in Christian sources, particularly in the Gospel, the idea of a person's value in God's eyes, and his care for every human soul at any moment of our lives, is reflected as follows, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows, Matthew 10 colon 29 31. St. John Chrysostom explains these words, he does not mean that they fall by God's involvement, this would be unworthy of God, but only that nothing happens without his knowledge. If he knows everything that happens, and he loves you more than a father does he loves you so much that even your hairs are numbered then you should not be afraid. He said this not because God counts hairs, but to show the perfection of God's knowledge and his great care for them. In what exists, there is nothing disorderly, nothing uncertain, nothing in vain, nothing by chance. Do not say, evil chance or bad hour. These are words of ignorant people. Basil the Great, since God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2 4, any event in our life should be seen as a message from God, leading us to happiness or correcting our path. A favorable opportunity is easy to seize, and easy to miss. Christianity echoes Islam, it is important for a believer not to dwell on their failures and not to succumb to self-pity and despair, so as not to miss the next opportunity. Allah, the forgiving and merciful, often provides a person with another chance. The Quran states, and if the truth had followed their desires, the heavens and the earth and all within them would have been corrupted. But we have brought them their reminder, and they turn away from their reminder. Quran 23 71. If a person overcomes fear and begins to realize the plan of the Almighty, their life changes radically. Space is cleared for a new reality, and so one has to sacrifice what they are used to and what seems dear and familiar. But they are given a chance to completely change their life and take a new path. The best sign that the opportunity presented will truly benefit us is the joy of its realization. No wonder the Hadith states that everyone finds it easy to do what they were created for. Through fulfilling their purpose, a person experiences the greatest joy and truth. We often fear missing out on new opportunities or failing to notice them amid the daily hustle and bustle. For followers of Judaism, the Kabbalah offers a way to sift through the chaff and distinguish real opportunities to move towards prosperity from illusions. The well-known Israeli Kabbalist, founder, and leader of the International Academy of Kabbalah Benei Barak and the Ashlag Research Institute, Michael Lutman, was asked, It is believed that in our time, the fear of missing out is growing more and more and becoming a real phobia. People are afraid of missing out on some information or something interesting and exciting. What is your take on this? What is it? His answer was, Once, I also suffered from this to some extent until I found the science of Kabbalah. There was no internet back then, and I was searching through all the magazines, libraries, everywhere, afraid of missing something important in the world about myself about life, and missing the opportunity to realize myself in some way. The basis of this fear is that a person wants to do something in life, to achieve something, not to miss the main thing the meaning of existence. But in the end, they are floundering until they get tired and settle for just somehow making it to the end of life, and that's it. But those who come to the level of Kabbalah, on the contrary, 
begin to understand that the most important thing for them is that people change for the better, and they invest themselves in this as in children. It doesn't matter to them what the children think of them they care about the children's success and that they think rightly about their own children. Every step an artist takes is an adventure, the greatest risk. Yet in this risk, and only in it, lies the freedom of art. Albert Camus A lucky chance doesn't come twice. Hindus, followed by Buddhists, believe in the reincarnation of the souls of all living beings. Each person creates their karma through their actions, whether good or bad, and even through their thoughts. After death, based on this karma, a person is reborn as another being or may even break the cycle of samsara, the chain of reincarnations. Therefore, everyone should strive to use every opportunity to improve their karma. The life of anyone is the result of their previous life, past sins bring sorrow and misfortune, while past piety brings bliss. Living without regrets is one of the spiritual maxims of Buddhism. But what is regret? Is it possible or even necessary to try to live without it? And if it exists, how can we cope with it? Regret is an emotional state in which a person blames themselves for a negative outcome. It is accompanied by feelings of loss and grief. At first glance, it seems simple, regret is pure negativity. However, it's not so straightforward. Experts suggest that regrets can vary in type and have different effects. The most common regrets are related to love, education, and career. Among these, romantic regrets are the most painful. Research conducted by Neil Rose and Mike Morrison shows that regrets about what was done cause acute pain initially, but this pain does not last as long as the pain from inaction. To risk is to lose one's footing momentarily. Not to risk is to lose oneself. Srin Kierkegaard According to Rose and Morrison, regrets, especially about what a person did not do, can push them towards success in the future, as the negative experience gained encourages them not to repeat their mistakes. This idea is supported by psychologist Melanie Greenberg, who says, Regret, like many other emotions, serves a function that helps a person survive. It's our brain's way of urging us to reconsider our choices, telling us that our actions or inactions could lead to negative consequences. Most people don't want to suffer endlessly from missed opportunities so they try to change their attitude and give themselves another chance to alter the course of events. Undoubtedly, regrets can have a very negative impact on our psychological health, especially if they occur too frequently. If a person fixates on their past mistakes and continually blames themselves for them, they risk falling into a deep depression, which can lead to serious psychological or physical problems. The best way out of this situation, according to experts, is to analyze the situation and apply the new experience in practice. Don't miss the opportunities that come your way. Treat life as a journey full of new and interesting things. A chance encounter can sometimes drastically change our lives. Let's approach these chances with joy. Even if the new situation scares us a little. Let's still try to seize the opportunity to show ourselves in new circumstances. After all, it's the regrets about what we didn't do that haunt people for years. Psychologists urge us not to fight our regrets, as they are an inherent part of human nature. Instead, by analyzing our regrets, let's view them as lessons and strive to build a better tomorrow by avoiding past mistakes. Chance may be the pseudonym of God when he does not want to sign. Anatole France The difficult is not the impossible. Renowned microbiologist and Pulitzer Prize winner for nonfiction, René Dubos, said, The necessity of making a choice is perhaps the most characteristic feature of conscious human life, it is both its greatest privilege and its heaviest burden. 
sometimes we need to weigh and carefully analyze our options. Other times, it's helpful to simply look around, let go of routine actions perhaps we'll see a new chance opening up new horizons. Often, new paths make us anxious, but experts believe this anxiety is just an additional source of energy for the next leap forward. By acting, we gradually gather information about the surrounding reality. Therefore, despite the risks of novelty, our overall anxiety level decreases. The mouse hiding in its hole is more afraid than the predator during the hunt. When we act, anxiety channels into activity. When we don't act, it accumulates within us and destroys us. Evolution has led organisms along the path of developing and enhancing their capacity for active behavior. The level of activity in animals far exceeds that of plants. Their physiological and mental processes are much more intense. Humans have taken an even more active position on the evolutionary ladder, ensuring their dominant role in the process of biogenesis. Humans make choices in favor of actively intervening in the environment, taking an active position in confronting danger and seeking partners. Nature itself pushes humans to act rather than not act. To a brave heart, nothing is impossible. Life is constant creativity, always risk and experiment. Since ancient times, people have found two ways to understand life active and contemplative. For example, the sculptor Michelangelo Bonarotta distinguished these two approaches to human temperament. In the famous Medici Chapel, he placed statues portraits of two dukes, founders of the Medici family, one active, Giuliano, the other contemplative, Lorenzo. Both are depicted in athletic Roman armor, impersonal and beautiful both divinely young and organically strong. Everything made by Michelangelo there, even unfinished, is such that it never ceases to delight and satisfy the eye. I would rather regret what I have done than what I have not done. Niccolo Machiavelli Each of the dukes is fully open to understanding life and created for great deeds. Each is capable of much and achieves much. Which temperament is preferable? Which approach to life is more effective? Both dukes are virtuous and perfect, both equally noble, wise, beautiful, and valiant. Anyone who looks closely at their beauty will truly consider them made not on earth but in heaven, Vasari. Both paths contemplation and action are equally difficult. But we must follow them there is no avoiding it. Human life is an expedition into the unknown. The undeniable truth is that we are all living for the first time. I saw that man cannot fathom what is done under the sun, Ecclesiastes 8.17. This means that we create our own difficulties and breed illusions with our fears, prejudices, and complexes. The opportunity to change is offered to us every day with each new person and new event in our lives. As Borges metaphorically put it, fate is a garden of forking paths, an unfinished, but not distorted, image of the world, an infinity of temporal sequences. As we know, life is one. Therefore, we must strive to experience more and try to live many lives within our lifetime, despite all the risks and responsibilities involved. Above all, we should pay attention to the unlikely events that cross our path as opportunities to chart a new course in our destiny. The fact is that events that were likely to occur are usually a continuation of an existing flow in our lives. But if we suddenly encounter something unlikely on our usual trajectory, it's likely the beginning of a new path, the start of an unexpected line. And through this event, Fate signals to us that everything can be changed. For a soul in need, nothing is impossible. It is essential to have a burning desire to change something in life, to try and take risks, and to disturb the complacency in zones of unmotivated well-being.
the determination to break the cycle of mundane days that bring neither the desired professional nor spiritual growth, to end a relationship with someone who doesn't bring beneficial changes into our lives. This is what is called Amor Fati a love of fate, no matter what. The main thing in life is to act, and pleasure and suffering will come on their own, Goethe once remarked. It's better to act and get a result that influences the future, enriching it, than to avoid all action, which will inevitably lead to regret. We must act, decide, try. Agir. Act. That's all Napoleon demanded of his officers. The Emperor of the French highly valued initiative and the ability to act at one's own risk, especially when the risk brought success. Every lost moment is an opportunity that may bring misfortune. Those with powerful action became marshals, ministers, kings under Napoleon. Life became like an adventure series imprinted in history. What prevents any of us from turning our life into a great adventure? Do we need a Napoleon for this? No, it's enough to remember the truth, already repeatedly expressed on these pages, it's better to regret what was done than what was not done. For happiness, you also need a chance. Aristotle Is it possible that you are copying yourself from yesterday every day? Move forward. 